Welcome to our second episode of the budget special here on Mirror Now and Beyond the Headline. Today we're going to talk about that one section of society, one section of taxpayers who have the most hopes and perhaps the most disappointment after every budget. I'm talking about the salaried taxpayer, that individual who shoulders the heft and the burden of tax paying in India. Did you know that in a country of uh, nearly 136 crore people, only 8 crore Indians contribute to direct tax? That's less than 6% of the total population. And over 35%, nearly 40% uh, of those are salaried individuals. So it's no surprise that this is the class of people who feel like they're constantly getting a raw deal. After all, even if they wanted to evade taxes, which is an illegal thing to do, they have no way to do it. Their salary slips come to them every month with the taxes cut. Now, having said that, is this the budget where there will be enough fiscal space to do something about tax slabs? They haven't changed for a very, very long time. They need to keep up with the levels of inflation. What can the finance minister do to give some relief to this class of taxpayers and citizens? That's what we're going to talk about on the show. I have a fabulous panel lined up for you. But first, let's take it across to Bengaluru, where my colleague Neha Hebale caught up with some salary taxpayers to hear their point of view. Well, in India, what is it really that the citizens today want as far as their union budget presentation is concerned? Well, the reason we raise this question is because we're reporting from Bengaluru, where, you know, one of the biggest, of course, constraints of late happens to be the fact that the crumbling infrastructure has, in fact, you know, claimed several lives. While this is just one aspect of it, we are going to be speaking to several people from the salaried community today and understanding from them what is it really that they are expecting from Finance Minister this time around. Hi, I'd like to start by asking you, you know, today we see that despite paying our taxes, you know, despite all of us religiously paying our taxes, there are still some expectations that probably are not met with the union budget set to be presented, you know, shortly. I'd like to ask you, what are your expectations? So see, first of all, uh, you know, as a taxpayer, uh, we, we all have certain expectations. Um, majority of the people, if you ask, I am sure they would be talking about increasing the tax slab so that they pay less tax. But I think we are now used to it, right? And it is fine. There's been inflation and everyone's salary, everything has increased significantly. So it's, it's not a problem to pay the tax. But what are we getting in return? I have been uh, living in Karnataka since I'm born here in Karnataka. So none of our cities are up to... Uh, the power of because I lived in Germany for two years and I was uh, paying the similar uh, taxes mm -hmm. or maybe a little more than what I'm paying here in India but uh, we didn't mind at all because the kind of infrastructure were provided there you you don't uh, mind at all paying them that kind of money to the government because they are taking care of their citizens mm -hmm. which is not happening in India Definitely, I would expect government to control or maintain this inflation so that the essential commodity prices don't go up in future. Because in the past two years, we've already seen 30 to 40 percent increase in your yeah, essential yeah, commodities, yeah. which is making very difficult for any household to maintain these days. Hmm. Two incomes is also not sufficient. And after the pandemic, you know, many time, many sectors have reduced the salaries, and but the tax is not reduced. All right, to speak to me on this, I'm joined now by Monica Hallen, author and analyst. I'm speaking today with Anjana Menon, CEO, Content Pixies. Uh, and I'm also joined by Harsh Rungta, founder, fee-only investment, Amirullah Khan, economic policy expert. Welcome to all of you, and thank you so much for speaking with us on this budget special. Monica Hallen, let me begin with you. Um, the point we're trying to understand over here is what the requirement is and what this specific class of taxpayers is asking for in this budget. Do you think, first of all, there will be fiscal space to give any kind of tax reprieve? Two things are there. One is that we've seen buoyancy in the direct tax collections. So till December 2022, 80% of the budget estimate financial year 23 was taken care of. Um, there's a 20% hike in direct tax collections over last year. So the, the uh, you know, the evidence is there 
that there is tax buoyancy, there is people are paying more taxes. There is a little bit of fiscal space, I think, for the finance minister to reward the people who have come forward and paid these taxes. It is also a pre-election year. So without destroying finances, I think the finance minister may give a little bit of relief on the different tax labs. So a 10 may get to 12, a 5 may get to 5.5, 6, or 2.5 may get to 3. I think uh, we should manage our expectations. I don't think there's going to be a big handout this year. Right. We are just coming out of COVID and the problems it has given us. So I think there may be some relief just as a small reward for people paying taxes, but do not expect too much. You know, uh, I, I think it's interesting that Monica Allen talks about it, that this is a pre-election year, and if there is a handout, quote-unquote, will it go to the salary taxpayer? Uh, is, is that uh, the, you know, in a sense, the vote bank which is looked at in the budget at all? Professor Amirullah Khan also with us. You know, we're focusing today specifically on the salary taxpayer who more and more is struggling with high taxes. If you add taxes plus direct plus indirect plus GST and what you pay GST on everything. It comes to a sizable chunk of incomes. There are uh, some calculations that are the highest tax slab of 33% tax plus cess with GST, you're paying about 45 to 50% of your income in taxes. Um, the problem is that no one seems to say anything about it and which is why it's business as usual. Do you expect that to continue? Tamanna, uh, <clears throat> I'll be very surprised if we have uh, uh, any change in the tax labs this year. Uh, the only thing it will mean, if there is indeed a uh, decrease in the tax rates, uh, is that the government has decided to hold elections in this calendar year. Otherwise, it really doesn't make sense uh, <coughs> to reduce uh, tax rates now. Uh, given the fact that our tax-to-GDP ratios are still woefully behind any uh, developed country or any developing country of the, of the top order. We are collecting barely 10 to 11 percent of uh, taxes as a proportion of our GDP. And the thumb rule is that any country which, is to be, which takes its economy seriously should be collecting at least 15 percent of tax-to-GDP ratio. So I think that this year it is going to be very unlikely. Politically also, you see the salaried class, which is really the salaried middle class, is in our country right now solidly behind the incumbent government. So even if the tax rates don't come down, they are still going to vote for Mr. Modi. And therefore, I don't think this year, uh, given the fact that there is no fiscal space, given the fact that tax to GDP ratio is low, the fact that we are going to have to spend a lot on freebies over the year and uh, next year and a half, given that it is election year, it is very, it will be very surprising if any tax rate comes down for the salaried class. Okay, if, you know, forget about election year and whether they're voters or not, because uh, th they don't seem to count as a voter base. You'll probably see more action on the agri side, perhaps, and we'll wait and see what the political analysis is. But let's keep the politics to one end. Let's look at this segment of society, and we've heard some voices already. Anjana, uh, you know, I saw you uh, putting out on social media very strong views about what the expectations of this segment is and how their point of view is often overlooked, especially when you look at con in the context of what this section of society gets from the government. Yes, they pay very high taxes, but all other services are taken care of privately. School, education, hospitals, security. You have to fend for yourself, isn't it? So, Tamanna, you're right that, you know, there is a great reluctance amongst taxpayers to pay tax. Uh, with the salary class, of course, they don't have a choice. It's tax deducted at source. With those who are not salaried, they do find ways to save taxes. There is, of course, tax evasion and there is tax avoidance. They're two different things. Now, the reason why a lot of taxpayers feel that they're short changed is because they don't really get enough for the taxes that they're paying. And by that, I mean tangible benefits. Right. There is a World Bank report which says that tax compliance tends to go up when people feel that they're getting bang for their buck. 
that they find that they're able to send their children to, say, state-funded schools. They're able to use the healthcare facilities provided by the government. There is a higher, there, uh, higher level of safety and, and so on and so forth. And the infrastructure is great. You're not falling into potholes and, uh, you know, walking over bridges that are collapsing. So um, when the average citizen feels the taxpaying citizen feels that he's getting some benefit from it, there is a greater incentive for people to pay taxes. And when they don't get that benefit, and it's not tangible, obviously people are either reluctant to pay taxes or they feel that they're being shortchanged. Again, like I said, the salaried uh, income tax uh, payer has no such scope, and nor are we at any point encouraging people to evade taxes. It's also your duty to pay taxes. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, we often make this comparison that you pay taxes, what you get for it. That's, that's fine. That's a good conversation point. But it is your duty to pay taxes and uh, help the country move forward. The only problem is that so few of us are paying taxes. So the burden is growing. Harsh Rungta, uh, in terms of tax relief, that's one part of it. What can we expect? Do you think it's also time to incentivize savings? Because the new tax regime, for example, which gave you lower rates in return for getting rid of your exemptions, like for your housing loan, etc., hasn't really picked up, has it? So, uh, very clearly, yes, the alternative, uh, you know, no incentive uh, and therefore lower tax rate regime hasn't picked up. Uh, and uh, I think uh, there have been clear uh, indications uh, uh, that uh, they really want that to work. Now, for that to work, there are two ways in which they can make it work. One, they can make the no... Uh, uh, no deduction regime uh, better or they can make the tax regime worse. I, I don't know which one or a bit of both uh, they are going to do. My, I, I, I would suspect it would be a bit of both and therefore, uh, you know, I would not hold my breath uh, waiting for tax concessions from this budget. Uh, simply because that would hit back at this no deduction, uh, you know, better uh, regime, uh, the no deduction, lower tax uh, deduc uh, reduction uh, rate. I think you might get better in that. I think they probably will they probably do that. incentivize and sweeten the but new tax regime. I do want to highlight ki I would think so. And I would say one thing ki you know, concentrating on one event, just the budget. I know these are a series of uh, things that uh, they would do, uh, and uh, any government would do that. And I think uh, having an over expectation from a single event uh, is uh, perhaps bound to be disappointing in the long run. Well, but uh, tax tinkering and incentive changes, tax regime changes, are announced in the budget. Hence the expectation from the budget. They very rarely, or I, I don't know if they ever happen outside. But you know, we just want to get more voices in today as well. Um, let me go across to Chennai, where Dharani is speaking with salary taxpayers. Just over 10 days left for the union budget to be, you know, presented in the parliament. Right now, I'm being joined by a few citizens from Chennai uh, to ask about their, you know, expectations on this, uh, this year's union budget. So what is your expectation on this year's budget? So as a taxpaying citizen, every year we'll have some expectations, like, you know, from the uh, uh, presentation. So what is uh, yours for this time? Uh, so, as you know, for the longest time, we've been hoping for some kind of a breakthrough as far as uh, uh, your uh, income tax is concerned, the personal tax especially. Uh, so, I'm really hoping at least the slabs are revised in some way or uh, there is a complete waiver, which we have been hoping for for a really long time, which have not come across in any of the budget. So, that would be one of my number one expectation. I also hope that the regular consumption patterns, regular consumption that uh, a citizen has normally in terms of dining or, uh, you know, going to a salon, for example, all those will become a little cheaper during this budget. 
that's my greatest hope as a citizen for that. Uh, earlier used to be capital gain tax, like once you cross one year, there won't be any tax for equity. But uh, if you look at last uh, couple of years, uh, it's around some 15 percentage for uh, within a year. And for long term, it's 10 percentage. Long term used to be nil, uh, you know, earlier. So I expect, uh, you know, long term capital gains tax should be exemption. The young age Indians, you know, they had gone bullish on the cryptocurrency and then even government tried to rationalize it with a 30% tax. But I think for this uh, group of people who are just starting off and investing and all, I feel if they could uh, rationalize this 30% and then it would further give, uh, you know, for technology and for uh, a greater uh, digital assets, it would be better. So I would want a rationalization on cryptocurrency. All right. Um, Monica, Allen, let me come back to the point of incentivizing savings. Now, um, the idea has always been to incentivize savings, to incentivize investments in things like housing loans. But the levels at which these are fixed seem very redundant in today's day and age. A two and a half uh, lakh uh, per annum level for, uh, uh, you know, your principal, pay your interest payment, your principal payment getting subsumed under ATC. All of this seems of a time bygone. Do you think at least these bits can be looked at? Something like standard deduction for medical expenses at 40,000. Uh, look at the kind of pricing today for these services. Tamara, you know, um, so, I am going to agree with Harsh that there is a definite nudge to move towards the new tax regime where you do away with the exemptions, deductions, and rebates. So, you know, to that point, I don't know if they will actually tinker with, say, for example, Section 80C, or uh, the medical deduction, or the standard deduction. Uh, but I actually wanted to make a wider point here. So one is the whole deductions and what the kind of work that you have to do to get them. But, you know, to the point that there is only this small sliver of population I think the, the government has to get more people into the tax net. There are rich farmers. It is a politically very sensitive issue. Why should everybody not pay their due? Why is it that one section of population, we're not saying tax the poor farmers or tax the day labor wages, but you know there is enough uh, meat on that bone for uh, the tax acts to fall on. So we need to, we just need to spread the tax net wider and the government has access to big data now. So why not again do a triangulation of the spending to send tax notices to people who are still using bags of cash to pay for a car? Why should they be coming with, uh, you know, half a sack of, a, of cash to buy a high value purchase? I mean, you know, anecdotally when we go out, to the to malls or to these showrooms, we still see wads of cash. Why is that still there? So I think we would feel as taxpayers a little better if everybody were to pay their due. And that is where I would I would hope that the focus stays on that because the tinkering can go on Tamana with deduction this much and standard deduction. But to a, uh, to all of us our veteran taxpayers it gives us great feeling of satisfaction when we see everybody paying their due. Absolutely, and that's the key point. Everybody paying their due. You shouldn't be penalized, uh, you know, for doing the right thing. That's, that's the sense. Amirullah Khan, in, in terms of... Um, the feasibility of actually doing something, and Monica Allen is talking about triangulating uh, those who spend a lot, no matter whether they're farmers. I mean, clearly that's a tough call politically. But feasibly, do you think that this is one headline that the government would want after the budget? Big relief for taxpayers, re big relief for middle class taxpayers. They, they may be something to that extent that we can hope for. 
unlikely. The, man, the timing is just not right. And actually, I want to extend that argument a little more. If you see the fact that about, uh, you know, uh, we have 8 crore people submitting tax returns, even if not all of them pay taxes, that's actually not a bad figure. You know, given the fact that the Niti Aayog itself says that 90% of the country earns less than 26,000 rupees a month, uh, we can't expect that figure to be you know, it can it can go up a trifle more, but you can't double it. You know, the, we don't have that many people in any tax playing slab. So I don't think that this flogging this horse of increasing the tax base is going to fetch a lot of return. In fact, what I would like to suggest here, and this is this is a this is a, a, a you know a, a naughty kind of suggestion that I make. Actually, we should be looking at increasing tax uh, rates, and I'll tell you why I say that. Firstly, the 10% or the five, top 5% in India, all of us, have seen our incomes go up substantially, uh, you know, faster than anybody else in the world. And while the, while the poorer 50% have actually seen their incomes drop over the last five or six years. So to say that everybody ought to be paying is a bit much and, and is actually penalizing those whose incomes have either become stagnant or have fallen. Those in the top bracket, the top 5% or the top 6%, actually the top 100 million, have seen substantial increases in income. Now, and therefore it is important for us to collect more taxes from those who are earning more, not taxes from those who are, who are simply earning. That is why some of us are now arguing that we actually can look at higher taxes for the super rich. We can look at other forms of taxation for those who are inheriting lots of money, who are generating lots of wealth. And, and this point that, uh, you know, that it, is, that it is those who are not paying taxes who are getting away is not really true because we have the highest rates of indirect taxation today where everybody is paying. So, so then, Every consumer is paying a tax and, and, and any e 101 exactly. that, will tell you. E so, so since we have been bragging yeah. every month that GST collections are above 2 lakh crore rupees a month and they're just getting better and better. Yeah. So you are widening the tax base one way or the other. You know, uh, uh, Monica Allen, uh, uh, Amirullah Khan anyway. has brought, brought yes. back those uh, um, very controversial terms, super rich tax, inheritance tax, that uh, get thrown up before every budget. Um, I don't know, how do you think that would go down and do you think that would make yeah, a real Amanda, difference? Uh... <laughs> so, um, you know, where I differ here is that by introducing the surcharge, I think three, two budgets back, three budgets back, the finance minister is already taxing the rich and the super rich. So your marginal rate of taxation for a person earning 5 crore or more in a year, which is of course a lot of money, is 42.7%. This is higher than countries like Switzerland, uh, which, which actually have a very strong social security system in place. Yes. So you already are taxing your rich and super rich fairly strongly. Now, you know, this inheritance tax, uh, it, it, it comes every, almost before every budget, it is brought in, but uh, I actually would be very surprised to see it in India. This whole story of wealth tax and inheritance tax, I doubt that this would make an appearance because it somewhere sends a wrong signal to wealth creators because look, finally, you do want to leave your wealth for your children, don't you? I mean, you can have very high moral posturing and say, no, we leave it all to charity, but that's only for, uh, you know, it's a moral high standing. But, uh, you know, even, to, even right. if you have a 2 BHK, you leave it to your kids. So why won't a person with 5,000 crore leave it for his or her kids? So it's an equivalence there. Why should yeah. only the rich pay that tax? So I'm saying I, I don't agree with this. I think the rich are already paying. I would just want more of the uh, rich who are not in the Tax exactly. to pay. I'm not asking for taxation on those who are just coming out. Yeah. They, they, they are. There are several who are not paying as well. Harsh Rungta has a quick response. Yes. Yes, Mr. Rungta. So, on both the things, on the inheritance tax, of course, is it, it is a tax consultant's delight uh, for the inheritance tax to be introduced. Anywhere in the world, it has not really produced results. It just means uh, creative ways to beat that tax. 
So I I think quicker that inheritance tax uh, uh, thing is buried, the better it is. It makes for good headlines. It makes for good political headlines. It does not make economic sense. The second thing, I think the middle class in India today, more than tax relief, needs what Monica is saying. We need a demonstration that people who do not pay taxes, and I don't mean the agriculturalist, I even mean the businessmen who, you know, people feel that, you know, they evade taxes. We need a demonstration. Even, uh, and I may not necessarily agree with what Mr. Khan, uh, Aminullah said, that, uh, you know, the, uh, that there is not uh, too much of meat left on that. I think there is meat left on that. Even if there is no physical or actual fiscal meat left in that, there is a huge amount of psychological meat left in that. I think I would feel good about paying my taxes when I see people who do not pay their taxes start paying their income taxes. Not GST is an invisible tax. Right. Everyone has to pay it. I want I'm paying both. I'm yeah. paying the invisible tax. Absolutely. All right. So a lot of food for thought there. Thank you so much to all of you. I'm out of time. Uh, but thank you once again for joining us on this budget special. Mm -hmm.